Kelly McDermott. Uh, I've been a veterinarian for eight years now. Graduated from Massey University uh, at the end of 2011. So today I'm going to show you how as a vet I would do a health check on a retired racing greyhound uh, as well um, how you can do some stuff at home to examine your potential um, pet that you are either are going to adopt or already do own. So today we've got uh, Rachel's here with George. Um, George is a four-year-old um, who hasn't actually raced, but that's okay. So from a vet perspective, the first thing I do is I tend to look at them from a distance. As they walk into the exam room, I want to know how are they moving? Is there any obvious limping or lameness? And what's their overall body condition like? Um, when they're just fresh off the track, they tend to be really, really well muscled. Um, and on the leaner side of things, because that's because they spend all day racing. Um, George here uh, is not quite as muscled as some of the X racers, but that's okay, that's because he's got a good loving home. Um, so what I tend to do is I start with their face. Greyhounds often have some teeth problems. So the thing that you can do is you just lift up their lips and just have a look all the way back here at the molars as well. And we're gonna look at both sides. And what I'm looking for is, is there tartar, is there plaque, or any obvious broken chipped teeth that need to be taken care of. Um, the next stage is to look in their eyes. Um, and there's more in depth uh, eye um, exams and checks that we can do. But as a basic, I just wanna know, have they got any pigment changes, cloudiness, anything that looks like it could be irritating them, particularly eyelids rolling in and things. Um, the next part is their ears. So I often will, believe it or not, smell them. Um, and that's checking for ear infections. As well, how do they look? You know, are there, are, is there a bunch of debris, dirt? Are they red or irritated in any way? While I'm up here, I also tend to feel their lymph nodes. So there's a few commonly uh, or easy to feel lymph nodes that we can deal with. And that's under here, which is your submandibular lymph nodes. Um, and that's a sign if they're really enlarged either of infection or potentially uh, cancer. So working my way down the dog's body, um, again, just feeling for the lymph nodes. And the most, and then another easy one is their um, patellar um, lymph node. The next thing I'm going to do is just feel their belly, so nice and soft. Greyhounds can sometimes be predisposed to bloat or GDV, and that's where the stomach twists over. So it's really important to make sure that we feed them on a regular basis and try to minimise exercise within an hour before or after uh, eating. Um, and if your dog is showing signs of abdominal discomfort, particularly after eating, don't hesitate, contact the, the vet right away. The other part I'm gonna do is listen to their heart. Greyhounds sometimes do um, have a different heartbeat and they can develop some changes in their heart because it is a little bit larger. So it's really important to have a listen. And, and uh, you know, if you get a result back at the vet clinic that you're not so sure about, um, ask for a second opinion or even go see a cardiologist um, because it is really important that we look after their hearts. Good. And George's heart is fantastic, so not a problem there. Another really important thing and something also to pay attention to at home is what do their feet look like? Particularly off of a race course, sometimes they can have pretty shredded nails. Um, sometimes they also have nail issues uh, where the, they just don't grow quite properly. Um, the other thing is underneath, checking out their paw pads, looking for any areas of soreness, um, any irritation within the, the um, toe pads, uh, or in between the toes I should say. And is there any areas that are sore, either to touch or palpate? Another thing that I'll often do, particularly if I'm worried about lameness, is what I call range of motion. So I'm wanting to know how far can they flex and bend each individual joint? And is there any pain uh, associated with any of this? Sorry, sweetheart. That was actually my, I, I caught his skin a little bit, so sorry about that. <laughs> Other thing about greyhounds is they can be a little bit drama, uh, dramatic about things sometimes. So just because they scream doesn't mean that they're actually hurt. Sometimes they just get a fright. Good boy, George. 
The other thing that we usually commonly do is take a temperature um, and that's just to make sure that they don't have a fever or any other um, issues, particularly at the time of vaccination or if they've come in because they've got vomiting, diarrhea, any other major uh, concern. Um, so from an owner's perspective, the main thing that as a veterinarian we're going to ask you, we want you to pay attention to, is how much your dog is eating. Is it the same, less? Um, are they being a bit funny? Are they chewing differently? Anything like that, that can kind of help us narrow down what's going on for your pet. Um, also their water consumption, really, really important. Are they drinking? Again, same, more or less. Um, because it, there's certain diseases where they will naturally drink significantly more water. And of course as a veterinarian, and we don't know that. So if you can pick up on that at home, it's really, really helpful. Toileting is the other thing. Uh, it, what do their bowel movements look like? Of course, you don't have to follow them out every single time, but if you can give us a general idea, you know, are, are they firm? Are they black like Melina? Um, or are they normal consistency, uh, shape, etc.? How much are they urinating? And it, are they peeing constantly or one big pee? All these little details can make a big difference. Um, as far as checking over your dog at home, probably the most important thing to pay attention to is, is those things that we've discussed. So they're you know, eating, drinking, toileting, but also their behavior, you know, is there any changes? Have you noticed that they're becoming anxious at certain times? Um, as far as the overall looking at them, are they limping? Um, have they changed their body condition? And this is where friends and families can be of help because sometimes you actually don't notice that they've dropped weight. Um, so your family members, if they come over and they haven't seen George for a month and they go, wow, he's looking really skinny, don't just dismiss that. Pay attention to that. Take them into the vet clinic. Get them weighed because there's things that can cause them to lose weight. And if you're with them all the time, you may not notice. Um, but the most, one of the other things that you can do at home is just check their teeth regularly. So lift up their gums. You should be able to see uh, all of their teeth, including these back molars. And the other thing is their gum color. That's another question we'll ask you sometimes on the phone, particularly in an emergency situation. Is their gum pink or is it white? and what's their capillary refill time. This indicates their blood pressure, have they got anemia or any other sort of disease which is causing them to have shock, uh, which can be pale or even bright red gums. If they're beautiful and pink like George's, that's perfect, that's what you want. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life.